Hey guys, if you're watching this, you're probably preparing for a test and you're not really sure what to do with graphs of motion. But guys, please don't stress about it. Graphs of motion is something that you slowly get a feel for. Um, get a pen, get some paper and start drawing some of these things with me. And feel free to pause the movie anytime you want and make sure that um, you're actually practicing these things. Just watching one of these videos doesn't really help things. So without much ado, let's go further. Okay, so graphs of motion are quite literally that. They're graphs that help me uh, see the numbers um, when you're starting to talk about a moving object. Uh, moving objects, very often they're just full of numbers, velocities, accelerations, and displacements. Graphs give us a very powerful way to figure out how something is moving. Now, when we start taking a look at graphs of motion, there's three different types of graphs. The first one is called a position versus time graph, or sometimes called a displacement graph. Okay, now there's a very big difference between your position and your displacement. So, position is where you are. Displacement is, well, you know, how far have I actually gone? So, you've got to be very careful about the difference between position and displacement. Position is where am I, and displacement is how much position have I changed? So how far have I gone? So um, first I have to ask where is the object as time passes and we're going to use graphs to be able to do that. Okay, so here's our first position time graph and there's some stuff that you really need to note. Position versus time graph, I need to make sure that my uh, y-axis is marked correctly so I'm measuring position as time passes. So there we go, there's my two axes and those are pretty important. And uh, now we've got a description. I would like to plot a graph that describes exactly what's going on here. Now I've got an object which is moving at a constant velocity of 2 meters per second. Now I've got to ask myself, what does that actually mean? That means that I'm going to change my position by 2 meters for every second that goes by. Okay, so now this might seem a little bit confusing, but um, what I want to do is I, I want to start marking things out on a graph. So we've got our axis here which is 0 meters at 0 seconds. So that means that for every second that goes by, I go up by 2 meters, another second, another 2 meters, another second, another 2 meters. I want you to think about this for a second and just pause the video for a second. How far have I moved after 5 seconds if I, uh, if I just take a look at the object? So what is my position after 5 seconds if I can move at 2 meters for every second that goes by? Pause the video for a second and then try it out and you'll see my answer after that pause. Okay, now if you've been pausing this and you've been trying this out for yourself, it's pretty easy. Now what you've managed to figure out is that there's most likely to be 10 meters of displacement. So there we go, so 10 meters of displacement. So I'm just going to plot that nice and clearly there. It's not the most uh, aesthetically pleasing dot, let's just make it a little bit bolder. Okay, um, so you can see that it's um, my displacement after 5 seconds at 2 meters per second is 10 meters. Where will I be after a further 5 seconds? What do you think? Well, this is pretty easy. That means that I go forward 5 seconds. That means that I go up another 10 meters in terms of displacement. There we go. There's my second dot. Looks a little better than the first. Okay, now these are just two dots. Okay, now all that I've got here is two dots and nothing more. Okay, so what I've done is I've plotted a line through them and uh, I've managed to so I kind of link up the points and make sure that these two are connected. Now I hope that you can see that this is a straight line. We're going to come back to a graph which is not a straight line in a second or two. Okay, so I've plotted a nice straight line through these. The only time you can plot a straight line is if you know that these points are in a straight line. Now we're going to start taking a look at some which are not in straight lines. Okay, now what starts to happen if I've got an object which is moving at an increasing velocity? So an increasing velocity means that uh, let's say, for, for instance, I, in the first five seconds, I move 10 meters, okay? I move 10 meters in the first one. But in the second second, or in the next five seconds, actually, let's make it a little bit easier. In the next five seconds, I'm going to find that I've actually moved quite a bit more, and let's say I've moved now up to um, something like that. Now, you can see that those don't make a straight line anymore. Now this is one of the really tricky things. When you're starting to deal with position time of an object of an increasing velocity, that means that you've got acceleration on your hands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt my best to try and plot a nice clean line through here. So that means that you've got a curved line. Okay, now a curved line, and if we wanted to extend this up, this is an example of something which is accelerating. 
So uh, this implies acceleration. Now, the one thing that I just want to impart upon you is um, that it's pretty important that you're able to describe these graphs. These graphs, you're meant to describe them starting with uh, the y-axis first. So let me give you an example. Uh, so the displacement, because that is my y-axis, the displacement increases at an increasing rate as time passes. So what does that mean? That means that as time passes, it's going to increase by a small amount at first, but then at a bigger amount, then a bigger amount. And that means that it's increasing at an increasing rate. Now, if that doesn't make sense to you, I want you to rewatch, go back, and take a look at this again. Because what we're going to do is on the next slide, we're going to start taking a look, which is now... Okay, so we've got this object now, which is... Um, now moving at a decreasing velocity again. Okay, now that means that initially it was increasing its displacement quite quickly. So starting from zero, uh, let's say that it increased its uh, displacement quite rapidly in the first five seconds. So there we go. It increased its velocity. At, you know, it was moving at an average of I think that's four meters per second if you divide it. But then what starts to happen is it starts to slow down or something like it. And um, instead of increasing twenty, it increases ten. And you can see that those aren't making a nice straight line. They shouldn't make a straight line at all. So what you can actually start to do, and do is, uh, you can actually start to realize that all of your displacement time graphs have got to make this nice curvature. So a curved position versus time, or a displacement time graph, is one which is showing you that there's acceleration taking place. We're changing velocity. Now, just as a little bit of a trick, you'll notice that you can actually start to tell how fast a vehicle is moving just by taking a look at the slope. That slope is very steep that slope is less steep. So that means that uh, this object is now slowed down. Less slope means less velocity. So the flatter the slope, the slower the vehicle is traveling. I want you to remember that. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to change things very slightly. Okay, so here I've got a position time graph and what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to describe the motion of the object as time passes. So just give me a second and by some movie magic and a graph is going to appear in front of you. And voila, there it is. I've drawn in a graph, and uh, what this graph is showing us is there's three very distinct phases, what's going on inside this graph. Um, so you can see that there's this initial up curve, there's a place where there's a straight line over here, and there's a place where there's a down curve. So, so uh, what I'm trying to say here is that this down curve is where the thing has been moving at a different speed and a different speed, and here we've got some constant velocity. So let me go through this very carefully with you. Okay, so section one you can see that the displacement is increasing. But it's not just increasing at a steady rate or a constant rate, it's increasing at an increasing rate. Okay, so let's just go through that again. Initially it didn't go up by much, now it's going up more, 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 and what's happening is it's increasing its rate of change of position. Now that's actually a definition for velocity which you need to know for a theory test. Okay. Now what's happening after 5 seconds is I notice that the gradient stays the same. So it is increasing, the position is increasing as time passes at a constant rate. That's how I described the motion from here to around about 8 or 9 seconds. So the straight portion over here, that tells me that for each second I go by, I'm going to increase by the same amount of position. So that means that the object is traveling at constant velocity. So let's make a little note over here. So I've got an increasing slope, so here we go, that is an increasing velocity because I told you that uh, the gradient is going to be the indicator of velocity, so my gradient is increasing. Over there, I have got a constant velocity and that's pretty important because I know that the object is traveling uh, the same amount of distance each second that goes by, so that's a constant velocity. And then for the very last one, I want you to pause and try and predict what I'm about to say. I've got this object which is increasing its displacement at a decreasing rate. That means that I've got a decreasing velocity. Now, these three descriptions which I've put on here are more for your understanding because you know that velocity means something's moving fast or slow. So you've got to be very, very careful when you're starting to describe these. The way you should describe this from 0 to 5 seconds, the displacement is increasing at an increasing rate. From 5 seconds up to around about 8 seconds, it's increasing at a constant rate. And then it's increasing at a decreasing rate. And that's how to describe this graph properly.
Okay, on to our next attraction, velocity tongue graphs. These are by far the most important and commonly tested ones. Guys, you're most likely to see these inside a test. Basically, it tells me how fast is the object, object moving at various times. That's what this graph can do for me. Okay, now I like these graphs a lot because most of them are actually straight lines. In fact, all of your velocity time graphs are going to be straight lines. So these are going to be very, very easy. So the first one I'm going to challenge you to do is to try sketch an object which is moving at a constant velocity of 2 meters per second. Now you might have picked up that you can pause these videos and you can actually try these on your own and see if I get the same thing as you. So I'm going to ask you to do that now and we're going to try see if we draw the same graph. There we go. This is probably the simplest graph you can actually draw. This graph is actually just showing me that the velocity is staying constantly at 2 meters per second. So at 1 second it's 2, at 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 4 seconds, it's just staying the same the whole way along. So that is my entire graph. That is as simple as this is. So velocity time graphs are by far the simplest, I'm sure you'll agree. Okay, so try and draw this one, an object moving at an increasing velocity. Now, um, for most of the assumptions in high school, you're going to try and keep acceleration the same. Otherwise, these graphs start to curve and there's calculus involved and it's really ugly. So what I'm going to assume is that the increase of velocity is going to be at a constant rate. I want you to pause the video and I want you to draw one and see if you get the same thing. If you plotted something like this, uh, that means that you win at this graph. This is really an easy graph. All that I'm showing you is that as time passes, it's going to increase. Velocity is going to go up velocity will increase as time passes at a constant rate. Okay, now the displacement time graphs are way more complicated than velocity time graphs. I'm pretty sure you've picked that up. Let's try one last one before we try an interpretation question. Okay, so this one's a little bit trickier than, um, than you think. It depends on where we, where we start our graph. So it says an object moving with a decreasing velocity. That means that it has some velocity at the beginning. Um, we're not told what that velocity is. Just for reference sake, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you to start your velocity at, let's say, something like 4. So I'm going to plot a graph, you plot a graph, and we'll see if we plot something similar. And there we go. You'll notice I've done something really strange. So the velocity is decreasing as time passes, so that's pretty much what we wanted. As time passes, it decreases. Something very special happens over there. When velocity becomes 0, this means that the object has stopped. Now that doesn't just mean that the object has put down an anchor and has stopped forever. There's a possibility that it might have changed direction. If you go through the axis, and this is going to come up a little bit later, um, this object now has a negative velocity, and you should know that a negative velocity means that it has changed direction. Now that can happen when a ball goes up and down, and I don't know if you can see in the background there, there's a bouncing ball happening in the background there. When an object changes its direction, it changes the sign of the velocity. So a negative velocity over there, so it's gone below the x-axis, a negative velocity means that this object has turned around. Okay, classical sort of question. Describe the motion of the object. So we've got this object which has now got various velocities. Again, there's three different phases, um, and you might actually pick up that this is a very similar motion to the earlier graph. Okay, so in this initial part, the velocity is increasing as time passes. That was really easy. So that means that the object is most likely accelerating. Okay, so that means that it is increasing its velocity. So that's acceleration. It's positive acceleration because the velocity is going up. So that's positive acceleration. What about this top region? This top region over here is where there is constant velocity. The velocity doesn't change as time passes. So that means that you've got constant velocity. So that is constant velocity. That's really easy. Okay, so some sort of constant velocity. You can even quote the value. I think it's 3 meters per second in this. Um, but constant velocity is something that you've got to be able to spot on a VT graph because it's just a flat line and it's straight. I want you to think about what's actually happening over here. When we start to interpret this last little bit, I've got a decreasing velocity. So that is negative acceleration. Now I just want to talk about that for a little second because um, it's pretty important that you understand this. Negative acceleration means that the velocity is decreasing as time passes. So that means that the acceleration is in the opposite direction to motion. I'm going to let that second sink in for a second. Acceleration is in the opposite direction to motion. So if this, this was a car driving forwards, that means that the direction of acceleration is backwards. Now that's kind of weird. How can you be going forwards and accelerating backwards? Now, what happens when you apply the brakes in a car is that the brakes apply a backwards force on you. Now, acceleration happens in the direction that you apply a force. So... If you apply a force backwards, your acceleration will be backwards even though you're traveling forwards. That means, in real life terms, 
that you are slowing down. This is negative acceleration. That is an object slowing down to a complete stop. If you want to mention that, that's really cool. Okay, just a brief note about acceleration versus time graphs. These are by far the simplest graphs. They are either positive, negative, or zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple of examples and I'm going to show you what can happen. Okay, so let's talk about an object at a constant velocity of 2 meters per second. Remember that I'm talking about a constant velocity and I'm talking about an acceleration time graph. So what is the acceleration if I've got a constant velocity? Well guys, this is really, really easy. Actually, it's so easy. I want you to try plot it. We're going to get back to you in a moment. And there it is. Duh. This was really, really easy. Two meters per second, that constant velocity of two meters per second. That means that there is no acceleration. The acceleration's value is zero. It couldn't be easier than this, guys. Um, acceleration is just how much your velocity has changed per time. And in this case, the velocity hasn't changed at all. So, you know, it, it can't be any simpler than this. Acceleration time graphs are either zero, positive, or negative. They are always horizontal flat lines. Okay, what about this one? An object moving at an increasing velocity. So that means that it is accelerating. That means that it's increasing its rate of change of displacement. It's getting faster. Okay, now I haven't told you by much, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot out just a shape on this graph. So let's try to do that. I want you to try and see if you get the correct graph here. If you got something like this, um, it means that you're winning. Uh, so this object is increasing its velocity. Now, this doesn't look like it's increasing its velocity, but remember that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. That's another definition that you need to know for a test. Okay, so acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Now, this tells me that for each second that goes by, this object is going to increase its velocity by one meter per second. Now, it might be different on your graph, but the end of the story is that this has got to be a horizontal line, okay? You cannot have changing acceleration. It's always a flat horizontal line. Now, let's take a look at an example of something which is decelerating, in other words, slowing down. Okay, so this one is admittedly a little bit more tricky, and I want you to try it. So an object moving at a decreasing velocity. Now you'll notice that I've left something underneath the x-axis. I've left a little bit of space, so that's your hint. Okay, so you can see I got a little bit excited with the red line. Now this red line is underneath the axis. It's some sort of negative value. If I was to read it off, um, I would say it's probably something like negative 1 over there. Uh, maybe negative 1.5 or something. That means that the velocity is decreasing by a value of 1.5 meters per second per second. And that's why acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. So this is 1.5 meters per second changed every second. I want you to think about that for a second. Chew on it. Think about it during dinner, during a bath time, and you know, sort of really get your, your head around why there is a unit that's meters per second squared. That's kind of strange. So I want you to chew on that, and we're going to move right on. Okay, so now on this acceleration time graph, we're being asked to describe the motion of the object. So there's section 1, section 2, and section 3. In section 1, I can see that there is a positive acceleration. That means that this object might be accelerating forwards from a rest. That means that it is speeding up. So for this section, all that I can say is that there is constant positive acceleration. For this part, all I can say is that there is zero acceleration. There is no acceleration. The object is maintaining its current velocity. This object is moving at a constant speed. What about this part down here? The object is accelerating in the negative direction. Now that might mean that our object is actually coming to a slowdown or a stop. Okay, now we've reached the end of the part where we kind of draw and describe some of these. Guys, you've got to practice these. This video cannot cover everything in the like 10-15 minutes I've got you. You've got to actually practice drawing these, getting comfortable with these, and reading them. It's very, very important. But now, uh, reading gets taken a step further when I ask you to do some calculations. So let's do exactly that. Okay, so this is probably the most important slide out of the whole lot. Um, this is how to calculate information when you're using a graph. Okay, that's, so this is going to seem very, very confusing. So there's a few steps I'd like to take you through. Okay, first of all, we've got to identify what type of graph we've got because you read them all very differently. So if you deal with an X versus T or a V versus T or an A versus T, you've got to read them all very differently. Now we've got to figure out what we would like to find from the graph. Um, so in other words, have I asked you to calculate the displacement from a velocity time graph or have I asked you to calculate the acceleration from a velocity time graph. Then I can use area or gradients to find out what I want. Okay, so let me show you. This is a little bit of a cheat note. Okay, now you're not going to be allowed this into any sort of test, but I've ordered them in a very particular way. 
Now if I'd like to get from a displacement time graph across to a velocity time graph, you might have already picked up that I can use the gradient on my x versus t graph to find the velocity. I can similarly use the gradient on a velocity time graph to find the acceleration. So that's pretty, pretty cool. All you need to do to go that direction is to find the gradient of an x versus t, the gradient of a v versus t, and I'll move onwards. So let's just go through this again. Position time graphs gradients can give me my velocity. Velocity, times graph, uh, velocity time graphs uh, gradients can give me my acceleration. Now the way that you go back is I take the area underneath a vt and I can get my displacement. The area underneath an acceleration time can get me my velocity. Now this is not going to make a lot of sense, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump pretty much straight into examples and we're going to try and see what to do with them. Okay, so here's my first example. I've given you a displacement time graph, so that's step one. You've got to find out what you've got. So I've got a displacement time graph. There we go, xt, x versus t, my displacement versus time, or at least my position versus time. Okay, so it says find the velocity of the object at five seconds. So I want velocity. So how do I get velocity from an x versus t graph? And I hope you copied down that last bit. If you didn't, go back a little bit, copy it down. So I would like to know, and you should know this by now, I would like to know what is the gradient of the line at 5 seconds. So what is that gradient over there? Okay, so how do I find out the gradient of this line? Okay, now it's very, very difficult to find out the gradient using those points um, because these points are on a changing gradient. But what you do know is that there is gradient over here which stays constant all the way through. That's a nice straight line. Okay, so I'm just going to erase that for a second because that's a little bit ugly. But what I can say is that the gradient from 5 until sec 7 seconds is very, very reliable. So how do I calculate the gradient from one point to another point? Well, let's find out. Uh, gradient, m, okay, remember gradient from straight line mass is equal to the change in y. So you take your final y value, which is 20. I subtract from it my initial y value, which is 8. And then I change in x over there, 7 minus 5. And if you put that into your calculator, 20 minus 8 is 12 over 2 gets me 6 meters divided by seconds. And that actually tells you what you're calculating because you're dividing meters. These top ones are meters. So there we got meters divided by seconds, so meters per second. And that is the velocity. It's easy as that. All you need to do is calculate the gradient on this graph and you will find the meters per second and that's what I mean. Okay, so let's turn the table slightly. What I've got here is a velocity time graph. Now these are my favorites because I don't know if you noticed on that, um, on that sort of plan, that little mind map over there, you saw that velocity time was right in the middle. That means that I can ask you displacement, I can ask you acceleration and I'm going to do exactly both. Okay, so I would like to find the displacement of the object after 17 seconds. Okay, now if you looked at that, I'm actually asking you for the area underneath this graph. Now what I mean by underneath is the area between here, there we go, that made a closed shape, and the x-axis. So I would like this whole area inside here. Also, there's a little bit of an area over there, but we're going to deal with that separately. So when I ask you to find the displacement of the object after 17 seconds, I need the areas of these shapes from the x-axis. That's a little bit of a trick, because take a look. I've got to divide this up into some triangles over there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the areas underneath them. So inside this first triangle, I've got to calculate the area of this. A half times base times height. The height is 12 times by 5 times by half. And that is 30 meters. That means during the first 5 meters, uh, sorry, first 5 seconds, that traveled 30 meters. Now the second part is 7 seconds down at the bottom times by 12 up at the top. Okay, so our next shape is fairly fairly familiar. It's, um, it's, it's got that sort of 7 down at the bottom, as I already said, times by 12, and that is going to get us an area of 84 meters up at the top there. And then, very lastly, I've got 3 over there down at the bottom, so half times 3 times 12, so that's 3 times 6, which gets me 18 meters. Now that's a triangle. And now take a look at the bottom here. I've got negative 5, times by 3 times by half and that is negative 7.5 now if you'd like to find out where this object is after 17 seconds all you've got to do is add up all of the displacements 
So I'm going to do this with you. So I've got 30 meters that were traveled in the first 5 seconds. I've got another 84 that were traveled in another 7 seconds. Another 3 seconds in the future, another 18 meters. And then the one thing that went backwards is I've got 7.5 meters in the opposite direction. So that's 3 times 5 times half. And I'm going to subtract 7.5 from there and that will get me a total displacement. And my total displacement here, so delta x is equal to 124.5 meters. And that's a fantastic way to find out displacement from a VT graph. There's one more type of calculation I want to show you off these graphs and that's on the next slide. Okay, so this is the very last one and this is quite easy. To find the acceleration of the object at all times. Now what you've got to be able to do is you've got to be able to find the, the gradient of the graph at all times to find the, the velocity, um, sorry, the uh, acceleration. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it for the various bits and pieces. So to find the gradient of this, I'm going to say 12 minus 0 over 5 minus 0. And 12 divided by 5 is a bit of an unusual number. What you'll find is that that is 2.4 meters per second, and it's positive. Up at the top here, the gradient over here, there's no change. So I know that acceleration over here is equal to 0 meters per second squared. For the very last part, and we're running out of time a little bit, I've got a very strongly negative slope, and this one's quite challenging. Acceleration is equal to my final, and you'll notice that's one long straight line. My final y value is negative 5, it's right down at the bottom there, minus positive 12. So what I've got is a negative 17 change. And what is the time value? It is divided by 5 seconds. Let me actually do that all, all together. Let me show you where, got, where I got the 5. What I did was I went 17 seconds minus 12 seconds. So what I've got is minus 17 over 5. And my final displacement is going to be negative 3.4 meters per second squared. Hugely important that I can calculate the acceleration from a VT, uh, VT graph. Um, if I get a little bit of time in another video, um, I will do some acceleration time graphs, but generally I won't ask you questions about calculations to do with those. I hope, you do, hope you've enjoyed this video. Please share on uh, the groups, WhatsApp, or whatever might be the case, and tell others to find this.